Hey, what's up, guys? It's Nathan here, and welcome to another part of my Why I Use Studio One series. Today, we're going to be talking about the use of VCA channels. Now, that's a bit of a confusing word. I'm going to show you how it helps you and what it's useful for. Now, I'm going to give you a, a situation that everybody's encountered, and since you know part of this series is I'm comparing the benefits of Studio One to Ableton Live, since I'd spent four years with Ableton, and now I'm two years deep into Studio One, and I'll never go back. Um, what I want to talk about is a situation that we've all run into. And the situation is, you know, you've got your separate instrument channels, uh, which in Ableton would be separate MIDI tracks, and you've grouped them together. And so you've sent them to a group that both of these channels are being sent to, and in that group you can control the volume of your tracks. If you turn this fader down, it controls the volume, to, makes it quieter. But there's a problem that we've all run into because if the individual tracks are being sent to effects or reverbs, well, what happens is when you turn that volume down, you're still going to hear the reverb. So I'll give you the example right now. This is the behavior that you're going to run into. So the volume that you're hearing is our reverbs, because if I turn them off, you're now not going to hear anything. Nothing plays. So the solution to that in Ableton that you would use would be to just take your reverbs and copy them over to the group. But what if you wanted your, your bass to have its own reverb? And what if you wanted your piano to have its own reverb? Right? So it provides, there's some challenges there uh, that, that make it a bit difficult. And I'm sure there's a workaround, but here it's a lot simpler. So what VCAs are really useful for is it's just for controlling the volume of these channels together simultaneously relative to one another. Now, a lot of big words chained together. I'm just going to show you how it works. Now, whereas this fader controls the volume of these two tracks because they're being routed into this group, um, what we can do with a VCA is if we have reverb on these tracks right now and we turn the volume down over here, you just hear the reverb as I showed you. Right? Right, so there's a problem there. What we can do is we just add a VCA here and, you know, we can put it up here since it's bigger than the, it's more important than the group. I like to put it on top of everything. We'll just make it dark red. And then watch what happens as I turn this volume down. What the VCA does is it lowers the volume of these tracks relative to one another. So when I move this fader down, you see those faders move and they're relative. They stay the same. So if piano is like lower, it's still lower. That's the relative part. But what's also going to happen is it's going to simultaneously turn down the reverb as well. So it's like the group... But whereas the group couldn't turn down these reverbs because they were happening before the volume of the group was affecting it, the VCA affects the, it affects the individual volume of each track, and it affects the volume of the sends as well. So we're going to listen to everything, and then it's just going to get muted very slowly. So that's... Where is that useful? Well, it's like, it's really useful if, you know, you've got, you know, you've got your intro to your track and you just want the instruments to fade in in terms of volume, right? You can just have that happening. So pretty cool for fade-ins, right? And if you go back to your group, you know, the other solution would be if, if you wanted to have complete control of the volume, and this is this was my main gripe with Ableton, if you were just using the group, and uh, da, 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 what happened? Something just got mixed around. If, if you were just using the group to control the volume, so I'll put that back up, and these are still being, you'll notice these are still being routed into the group, and yet I still have control over them because you can, you can still have a group 
to control like filtering on the sounds. Let's uh, let's disable the VCA's automation, which you can do. That's a really cool effect. So it'll just stay there, and the automation won't do anything. So you can have a filter on the group. But the problem is, is that it still won't affect these reverbs. So the usual course of action would be that you would take both these reverbs, drum and hall, and then you would send them to to the group. Where did it go? Um, which can, that might be why, because that would create a feedback loop, right? So if you had a reverb on there, you can't put it in because it creates a feedback loop. Um, that's off topic, so it doesn't really matter. So we send them to the group, and now we have global control of everything. Right, you can control the volume. You can control the filters of the of the reverb and the 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 dry sounds at the same time. So that's useful. So you still have that control. You still have the ability to route everything to the group. But sometimes you don't want these reverbs routed into the group you want the reverbs going to like a separate group or somewhere else to like a bus where maybe you send all your reverbs to that bus and this isn't like a secret or anything but like you send all your reverbs to the same bus and then you put multi-band compression on the mid-range so that you can have everything super loud in your track but then it can also sound very roomy at the same time which is a tutorial i'll be releasing uh, it'll be an advanced tutorial it's going to be really great it's a really simple way of keeping everything open and big in your mixes so this vca is just so helpful to be able to just control the volume of everything very easily and if you want to switch the groups you can just you know turn them off they're no longer controlled by the vca that doesn't affect the faders anymore you can turn it back on and you have control again so that's vcas in a nutshell it's really useful for like intros and outros so that instead of like you know, bouncing these things to audio and then just fading them out. Um, I can literally just do it with a fader and I'm sure there's other uses, but for me, that's how I would use it. So hopefully that was helpful. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave me uh, some below. And if you like this video, please let me know what you think about it. And I'll uh, see you guys around.